Lift up those hands to heaven. One more time, give thanks to God for all that he has done. Go ahead and thank him because no one is like him forever is on his throne. He is worthy to be glorified and to be honored. Open your mouth and thank him for the testimonies, for the signs and wonders. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Because you have thanked him, he will do something that will make you thank him the more. Yeah. Lord, let this service mark the end of wickedness in my life. Yeah. Around all that concerns me and all that belongs to me. Lord, is it, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Today must mark the end of wickedness. Yeah. Every form of wickedness must end today. We said, oh God of vengeance, show up. Lord, today, show up. Today what? I pray that you send me a word that will make my, make my darling tears to come to an end. Whatever has made me weep in the past must end today. I refuse weeping after today. Shame must not come to me again. Reproach must come to an end. Send me your word that will bring about that turnaround that I desire. Go ahead and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Eru brezi kato brakati ako shanto bradi ako tali. Send the word my way, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. The right word that will bring about the change in my life. I desire to turn around on every side in the name of Jesus. The right word that will bring about the turn around, send it my way. Le crezi zalo bregeti akantale gezi la kore brebreke ke ako kabrakati akatala e crozale yikrato brali aketele gezi. I desire the turnaround word, a word that bring a change in my life, a season word for me. Are you speaking to God from the depth of your heart? Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Someone, tears will be wiped off after now. In the name of Jesus. Now listen. There are things I don't like hearing. They have prayed, thank God for the release of that young lady, young girl. But hear this, except I'm not sent. By Friday this week, all of them will be dead. Not one person that adopted that daughter of God will be alive to see Friday. Yeah. Under this unction, under this anointing, I decree their sponsors, including whoever is behind it, dies between now and Thursday night. Yeah. I declare it in the name of Jesus. And anyone planning to pick anyone connected to this family, I decree before the attempt is made, they are dead in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And what a day. When God fixes a message, he has a purpose. And I know today, every form of shame in your life shall be rolled away. Yeah. Father, breathe your breath upon the word. Let the Holy Spirit encapsulate everyone with power to produce results of our lives. We vow to give you every glory in Jesus' mighty name. Give me a big hand. You may be seated. Enjoying all round comfort, part two. We are redeemed to reign. He so he has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. He said, out of every kingdom and pull a tongue and nation, Revelation 5, 9 and 10. No matter the background, no matter your tribe, you are redeemed to reign. You are not redeemed to be reduced. Redemption does not connote reduction. It is for celebration and distinction. He has made us unto our God kings and priests. We shall reign here, not when you die. You know, there's this ignorance so they used to sing, those of you when SU, when we get to heaven at the marriage supper, it's a wrong song. Ignorant song. It's not scriptural. When we get to heaven, so what will you do here? You victory here, then heaven you relax. Is that true? 
You say, when we get to heaven, I demand it suffer. So, what, yeah, now what will you, you suffer here? That's why nobody, if you follow those kind of songs, nobody, your brothers won't be born again. Lie, lie. And they'll be crying, no? When we get to heaven, I demand it suffer. I the greater sin. Wrong, ignorant, unlearned, unscriptural songs. They don't have scriptural basis for those songs. When we get to heaven. So, what will you happen here now? When we get to heaven, victory starts from here. We start from where? In heaven, there's no battle. Battle has been fought and won. So, there's no point in saying, we get to heaven. You see, as many of us have got kicks up, I shall reign where? On the earth. We reign here. Say, we reign here. You are a chosen generation. A royal what? And holy. That you should show for the prince of who has called out of time to a marvelous life. So, you are created to be a marvel to your world. First Peter 2 9. We have. A royal destiny. But every great destiny missed opposition. The moment Moses was born, Pharaoh rose. The moment Jesus was born, Herod rose. The reason the enemy is fighting you because you are too great. But the Holy Spirit is whom you need for all satanic barriers to be crushed. It's the one that guarantees our freedom to enjoy honor and comfort. Say with me, he's my comforter. Are you talking like a somebody's convinced? Say it like a child of God. Say, Holy Spirit, you are my comforter. In John 14, verse 16, and I'll pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, Jesus speaking, that He may abide with you forever. With that is comfort, life will be full of struggles. Stagnation ends when the Holy Spirit guarantees our comfort. How does the Holy Spirit gives, give us what? Comfort. How does He give us comfort? How does the Holy Spirit give us what? Comfort. Number one, he proclaims our liberty. He proclaims what? How does he proclaim our liberty? In Isaiah 61 verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captives. Lalo bregetia koshan to bradia katala bragadia kata. Israel was in bondage for 430 years. And in Exodus chapter 12, when liberty was to be established, they left. Today, by the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, there's one that is behind vengeance. Your liberty will be established as I'm talking right now. Yeah. No matter how long you have been held captive, today is your day of liberty. Yeah. Serving by the power of the Holy Ghost, today is my day of liberty. He yeah. said, The Lord is asked by where the Lord is the of God is there's what? Liberty. Right now, in the name of Jesus the Christ. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, somebody's liberty is established right now. I command wherever you be held captive, be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Free from that evil attack. That demonic oppression that made you to take cocaine as if it's just under the powder you're rubbing. I decree that demonic spirit to leave you right now. Your liberty be established if you believe it. Say amen like a believer. He quickens our mortal bodies. Quicken our what? Hey, does he give us comfort? Your mortal, you know, if body is not comfortable, oh my God. A young man fell and injured one of his ribs. I saw the level of pains and discomfort. A few days ago, he fell and then broke his rib. Outside the country, in the bedroom. He was doing it still like this. I was looking at him, you know, when pain, that is discomforting. Is that true? The Holy Spirit is the greatest of all soldiers. As I'm speaking right now, if there be any pain, something giving you discomfort, listen carefully. On the side, read on my voice, listen. He said, He giveth life. He giveth what? He said, But if the Spirit of you that raised up from the dead, Romans 8 11, dwell in you. Do you believe He is in you? Do you in case you're not baptized the Holy Ghost, make sure you're baptized the Holy Ghost because you don't know what you're missing, not baptized the Holy Ghost. He said, "If shall the Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So here, today, if there be any organ in you that is dead, I command the quickening power, go into your body in the name of Jesus. He brings dead things back to life. He brings what? Number three, he brings dead things back to life. Number two, as he quickens our mortal bodies, he brings dead things back to life. In Job 33, verse 4, Maru Bredia Ketale Gezi, the Spirit of God had made me, the breath of the Almighty had given me life, 
If there be any part of you that is dead, man, bro, Ziza, lo, bradia, Holy Spirit, lift your right hand and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. give life Spirit. to my body. Spirit. Touch that part or speak to that part. Just say, call it by name. Say, give life to my organs. Give life to my womb. Give life to my brain. Give life to my lips. Give life to the broken rib right now. Give life to it in the name of Jesus. Speak to your body. Give life, Holy Ghost, to my body. In the name of Jesus. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. As I'm speaking right now, life enters that part of your body if you believe in the name of Jesus. Life enters that part of that area that was dead in the name of Jesus. He said, the spirit give it life. John 6, 3 and 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6, the end part. Now the Holy Spirit touch the key and life will surge into someone's dead organs. Touch the key and you see what will happen right now. Whatever has been dead in you, the quickening power, touch the key in Jesus' name. I lay break a zika to brabraketi a koshin talo. E croziza lo braki a ketale. E krato mani dia no ni a netalo brakati akara. Holy Spirit, give life to every dead organ or issue. Whatever has been done, everyone want life, receive life right now. Yes. Lift right now as the Son of God say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, by your power, give life. Now call that area you want life. Give life to my lips. Give life to my business. Give life to my brain. Give life to my body that is not functioning. Speak and it will hear you. Give life to my manhood. Say so. Speak to your body. You'll be shocked. Give life to my brain. If talk to him, he says, yes. Give life to my organs, my heart. Give life to my kidneys. Open your mouth and speak to him in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Give life. To my eyes. To my ears. To my kidneys. To my heart. To my lips. Give life now. Recreate it. In the name of Jesus. Receive life as you have declared in the name of Jesus. When you are speaking, you speak with deep reverence and revelation. And you know, we just talk as if we are just talking. He's a person who has pain in the hand. There's somebody with pain in your hand. Who has pain? In your hands that you do like this pain your hands it pains you who is the person come up who is the person with the pain you have pain i hear you are god you have pain on your hand your hand your hand this one's hand come up in any of the churches just come come even if you have like stroke just come where is the pain you have pain you have pain now listen every other person stand where you are every other person just stay where you are now say with me hold give me a microphone you'll be shocked now as i'm praying for him i'm praying for everybody Send me Holy Spirit. You say it. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say it out. Holy Spirit. Give life. Give life. To my hand. To my hand. In the name. In the name. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. Now move your hand. You'll be shocked what will happen. Move your hand. I wanted somebody with stroke. You will be shocked. Move your hand. 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 I don't want to bother. I hear him as a man. Move your hand. There will be no pain. Ask him. I can tell you with authority. Move your hand. No pain. No pain. Ask him, no pain? Yes. Ask the other one, no pain? For how long? For more than a week now. For more than a week, no pain? That's it. Yeah. For how long? For what? For over three weeks, he has had pain on this wrist. What now listen, even if your organs are dead, the Holy Spirit give life to those organs. In the name of Jesus, now it's so simple say the holy spirit give life call it by name don't bother give life to my manhood give life to my kidneys talk to him he's a person holy spirit give life to my legs give life to my brain the dead brain that makes me to be paralyzed give life you'll be shocked the paralysis we live right now stroke we go give life to every dead part of my brain in the name of jesus Give life to my blood system that leukemia will live. 
Give life to my ribs that have been broken and recreate them in the name of Jesus. Give life in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Number four, he executes vengeance. He executes what? Vengeance. In Isaiah 61, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that more. <laughs> One way the Holy Ghost gives us comfort is through what? Vengeance. And where the days of God's vengeance. The days of God's vengeance is not coming. It has come. And today, God will take vengeance in our favor. Yeah. That amen is too weak. Yeah. In Isaiah 3 verse 4, he said, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem is come. Today, today, God will take vengeance against every wickedness that is standing against our lives in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 30. For we know him that had said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord. He says, I recompense tribulation to them that trouble us. 7 Thessalonians 1, 6. Now I declare the God of vengeance will recompense tribulation to everyone who is troubling our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Vengeance is the nature of God. He wants to take vengeance in our favor. But how do we do it? Now look at uh, uh, Luke 18, 7 and 8. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Which cried their night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge the what? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Many of us, we, we, we don't want God to take vengeance. We are too sarcastic, so relaxed. Oh my God. You need vengeance to escape the brutality and manipulations of the enemy. Oppression ends when vengeance shows up. He said, Oh God of vengeance, to whom, oh Lord, to whom vengeance belongeth, oh God, to whom vengeance shall thyself. Psalm 94, verse 1. God will show himself today. Amen. Say a minute. Amen. Say God show thyself. God, God of vengeance. God Everything Israel did, Pharaoh did not move. All the signs, Pharaoh did not move. God had to show vengeance before Pharaoh released Israel. There are people, there's no appeal that can make them release you. There's no negotiation that can make them agree with you until you come the hard way. You think negotiation would have made this church to be the cathedral that God is building? No way. I feel the saint of later, they said, listen, we must not build on that land. They, that, I am telling you, I sent a team from the church to go and meet them. They said, no. I called the governor then. He said, no. Everybody on said, no. That we must not build on that land. God's own church. At that time, I knew that no appeal will work except vengeance. And they gave an order that any attempt to build, they should bring the building down. Fence we erected. We erected the fence long ago when the church has not even thought of building such a place. We said, let's buy this land and keep. They sent military men armed in truck. When I mean truck, Lord, I said, we are going for war. Nobody was there. They brought down the whole fence. The entire fence was brought down. Tell me who you are built to with military men with truck. Two young men gave order. One said, if you see anybody resist, shoot to my side. But we have a God of vengeance. I went to the place and I lifted a broken block and I said, the way this block is broken, break whoever gave this order. I said, anybody who gave this order, break them down on a Thursday night. By Friday, the one who gave the order died coming out from 9 club. By Sunday, the one who said they should carry the military men slept and never woke up. They left us. Today, whoever has vowed to deal with us will not see next week. Anyone who I want to use his position to oppress us, I decree in three days they'll be dead. If you believe in say amen like a believer. If you believe in say amen like a believer. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh God of vengeance. Show thyself. Go ahead and do this and cry to the God of vengeance. Oh God of vengeance. Show thyself. 
Let the world to the power. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Open your mouth. God of us. yourself in Jesus mighty let me tell you nobody should deceive you Christianity without venues you won't go too far I can tell you won't go far in this wicked world if your Christianity is the type that you just saw you do is Jesus, I can tell you, you won't go far. They'll mess your destiny up. That will not be your portion. Please, don't play down on ventures. This world is wicked. This what? He said, the whole world, though, not one continent. The entire world lieth in the whole first John 5 19. The entire world, listen, this is not an African problem. It's not an American problem. It's the global problem. Wickedness is you may be seated. We look at the significance of vengeance. The significance of what? The significance of vengeance. So here. A. Vengeance secures our victory. It takes vengeance to win the battles of life. <laughs> Jehoshaphat and Judah was, they were faced with three nations against them. In Second Chronicles 20, and then Joshua looked upon the God of heaven. <laughs> he cried to God, and God set an ambushment against their enemies. If you read Second Chronicle 20, read 1 to 24 when you get home for better understanding. Now listen, it was a fierce battle. Fierce what? And then God gave it. Today, no matter the battle I read against any of us, including this church of Genesis, I decree the same God that gave Joshua victory is giving us victory right now. Amen. Even the minister of the gospel watching this service, that ministry that they want to fight, that business they want to fight, that family they want to fight, they will go down without you fighting in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not fight, but God will fight for you. And if you say amen, you see it happen. Why? What? The silver of vengeance be. Vengeance enables us to proclaim the gospel of Christ. Do you know you can't proclaim gospel without vengeance? <laughs> if you think you can go somewhere to preach, it's a lie. There are places they will tell you no preaching. Are you getting me? Life story. Life. A woman rose her hand and gave a law that no church should put speaker. In this town. In the house of assembly. <laughs> that, and I asked him, I said, the, the other people of other faith who put speak outside, are they, are they not disturbing? It's church you saw. That no church you use speaker, that if you want to do, must close all doors in a Christian state. I said, listen, who is that person? They said, so so woman raises as assembly that Churches are disturbing, so if they want to preach, they should close doors. That same week I raised my voice. She died of cancer. Yes. You know the funny thing? It's a very pathetic story. I won't tell you this. But she died. That same week she was with cancer and died. Now listen, in case you're a lawmaker, be very careful. We don't go with your own instruments. We go with the hand of God. I stand in my office. I decree victory established right now. Yeah. You can't proclaim gospel without vengeance. One day, Paul was preaching in Acts chapter 13, 8 to 11. A man called Elimas the sorcerer. <laughs> it's Elimas the sorcerer. For so is his name by interpretation. We stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul. Who also is called what? Paul. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Set his eyes on him. He said, and said, oh, full of all subtlety 
and all mischief. Thou child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Paul was preaching. This man was using his terms to the storm. Would thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold. Paul, you know, Paul said, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And that shall be blind. You know what Paul said? You should be blind. You know what he said? Paul was blind when God called. So he knows when it takes to be blind. Paul said, I know when someone is blind, I know that you won't see the road again. Because I have experienced it. So if Paul said, be deaf, he said, the man will be using hand. He said, be blind, so you won't see the road. Because he, Paul himself was blind for three days. You all know, you know this about Ananias, I pray for him. Now he said, be blind for a season. Be blind for what? Season can be a time to be born and a time to die. Season can be a lifetime. A time to be born and a time to die is a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. Exactly what happened to Paul. He prayed on him. And he went about seeking some to lead him. Paul did not say, oh God, this man disturbing. We went to a place in Ukraine land, Ebeda. And I went to pray. I was preaching and then some called boys were disturbing. I turned to the leader. I said, listen, if you don't stop this noise now, they dread him. The boy, the, the young man, people dread him. I was preaching they, it was, they were using towel to clean his face. You know what? Someone's arrogant to the core. And he was disturbing the preaching. I was, the community called me to come and preach. To say I should lead them to Christ. They will clean his face. You do like this. They will take towel to clean his face. I said, you listen. I pointed at him. I said, listen. If you don't hear my preaching, you are dead. He didn't take one more. They shot him down. They killed him. Bullet does not enter his hand leg before. They said the bullet. The same young man, one bullet finished him. Listen. Anyone disturbing the gospel of Jesus and the reach of my voice globally goes down now. You can't preach this gospel without vengeance. Are you hearing me? And I stand as a man sent by him. Anyone that wants to turn anybody's face. Concerning the God of Jesus, I decree them to go down and the of my voice. Amen. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. Amen. Paul did not go there to negotiate with Elimah. He said, Elimah, the sorcerer, be blind for his season. I command such people to go down with stroke. Amen. See, vengeance leads to supernatural breakthrough. Vengeance leads to what? The significant of you cannot enjoy breakthroughs until vengeance is in place. So, if you want breakthrough, you think breakthrough is only you know who is who? No way. In this wicked world, where cult men are organizing contract before they, they, they advertise, before they advertise, they finish the contract. They've given the contract already. Before they say employment for social company, they've given people. So, you need the supernatural force to clear the way. Are you getting what I'm talking about? If you read Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, after vengeance was when 4 to 7 became possible. For those who are not Bible students. After vengeance, therefore, begin. They shall build the whole place. They shall raise up the former legislation. They shall repair the waste cities. And there are many generations. He said, the strangers shall stand and feed their flocks. And the sons of aliens shall be their plowmen and their wine treasures. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of the God. You shall be eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall boast themselves. But said, For your shame shall have what? Now I decree. By vengeance, may you be restored to dignity. Amen. By this vengeance, honor and glory and favor shall be someone, someone special. Amen. You can't have full expression of their redemptive benefits without vengeance. Now, hear this in Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11. He said, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed, what is speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. One that was meditating when the scripture revealed it to me, he said, he said the reason why he said wicked men are, are always prospering is because church people don't pray vengeance prayers. So God cannot, if, if Moses never called on God, God would have done it against Pharaoh. Our prayers is for, it's of against. It, there are things you pray for. You don't pray for a witch, you pray against a witch. He says, suffer not a witch to live. That means, if you suffer a witch to live, it will keep bewitching. The only way to stop the witch from bewitching is to make sure the person does not live again. Sir, here. Because if you live a witch, you, the witch will keep turning other witches. So you keep they will keep recruiting more witches. So the only way to stop the witchcraft is to make sure that witch does not live. 
But some of us will pray, oh God, let the witch be born again. What kind of prayer is that? Are you holier than God who says, suffer not the witch to live? God says, suffer not the witch to live. You now say, oh God, keep this witch to be born again. That kind of Christianity. Don't spare the wicked though by keeping quiet. So I enforce vengeance for my breakthroughs. Say it one more time. And may the vengeance of today open the doors of breakthroughs. D. Vengeance silences the wicked and their wickedness. Vengeance silences the wicked and their what? The wicked will not stop being wicked until vengeance is provoked. He said, oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Psalm 7 verse 9. Wickedness is rapidly on the increase. you agree with me? He said, the whole world light in 1 John 5 19. He said, the habitation of the earth are full of cruelty. Is that true? Psalm 74 verse 20. <laughs> You, you, hey, my mom, we're broke with the accountability. Half the that come up for the tablets of the earth are full of the of cruelty. There's wickedness everywhere. Wickedness, what? Wickedness everywhere. Hmm. To prevail in this wicked world, you must travel with vengeance. It sets the pace for you to win the race of life. Don't sit down and watch the wicked torment your life. Arise and call on God of vengeance to show up in your favor. Say so here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? People are wicked, oh. Oh my God. The world is what? Okay. Today, the wickedness of the wicked against you and I will come to an end. Yeah. Now hear me, people of God. I want to minister before we take the oil because time. At this point, listen to these scriptures. You are going to use them to pray. In 2 Thessalonians 1 6, it says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble me. You tell God after now, say, Lord, everyone troubling me, give them multiplied troubles. You understand how you pray? I'm giving you scripture. This one I'm, I'm, I'm done preaching. I'm just missing. Everyone troubling me, give them multiplied troubles. In Psalm 89 20 23, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Marubre. I decree that oil you use on your head will turn to an holy anointing oil. Yeah. By the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Yeah. With whom my hands shall establish, my hands shall also stretch him. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the son of wickedness. What? Wickedness is ending right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I'll beat down his foes before his face. We'll be alive to see them all. Listen, the worst thing is somebody who says you will not progress. You are progressing. And the person cannot do anything. And plague them that hate him. Everyone that hates us, even from their stomach, God will plague them. Yeah. I've seen people say, I hate this man. And my wife is living with us. A man talked carelessly against His mouth was leaking. Leaking against me. She came and said, this man, he left. He went to another church. So his mouth was leaking. <laughs> He could not have food to eat. Food. Half strength, close. Everything close. It's destiny close. He came to my wife and says, I spoke against Papa. And everything in my life turned upside down. I smiled. She came, he couldn't pay half strength. He repented. So she told me, I said, carry give him. It's not a member. It's the enemy. <laughs> I will hate. Look, there are people you are amongst them all. It's not only me. Where say I hate this man, the person is in trouble. I hate this man. Whoever hates us will be plagued right now. <laughs> if you think you are the one God is speaking to, your amen confirms it. <laughs> say by the go God of vengeance. <laughs> Beat down <laughs> everyone against my life. <laughs> plague. Those who hate me. Shout a better amen. Nazareth yeah. 49, 24, 26. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty of the lawful captive delivered? But thus said the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the eternal shall be delivered. I will contend with thee, I will contend with thee, and I will save thy children. I will feed them with, that oppress thee with their own flesh. They shall be drunk with their own blood, and as sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that, I'm, I, uh, that I, the Lord, am this, I'm thy Savior, the Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. <laughs> our children, nobody will oppress them. Yeah. Nobody will oppress our children. Yeah. 
anyone who say kill him will die before they make their tent. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, 38, 39. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I have consumed them. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not rise, arise. Yea, they are fallen under who? So me all that after me today they fall under my feet. Say it with faith. Amen. Job 22 27. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. Every sin they have committed, God will reveal all. Amen. What I quoted is not what you put there. I said Job 20 27. What did they put there? They are putting under scripture. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. That's what Job 20 27 says. They are putting under scripture. I don't know. And the earth shall rise up. Yes, them. They have every sin they've committed since they were born. Since they, want, they don't want us to rest, God will reveal all. Yeah. Rest your feet. You are going to command that all the words declared must come to pass in whose favor? In whose favor? That's how you pray. God, every word declared must come to pass in my favor. That's Isaiah 34, verse 16. That's what we're praying for. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. Have I read the scriptures? And none of this shall fail. None shall want her made. For my mouth it had commanded, and his spirit had gathered it them. Lord, everything that has been declared must work in my favor. You are going to take two prayer points at the same time. Everything I have declared must work in my favor. And then everything David said against Goliath came to pass. Is that true? He said, my ear shall hear the desire upon my enemies and against me. You are going to declare, this is what I want to see against my enemies. You will be the one to say, oh, every, everything David was the one who said, listen, God never wrote anywhere. Goliath, your head will be brought down. No way, I read your Bible. It was David who said, I'll bring down your head. Then God confirmed it. There was no way in scripture or anything that Goliath, no. He said, you are circumcised Philistine, I'll bring your head down. God confirmed. So you are the one to say, everyone after my life, seven days. You say it, I don't mean you must say, you say it the way you want. I was the one that said, seven days, the one that must die, God kill him. Do you understand now? As all sick and cool, this weekend is your last weekend. Go kill him. The boys who went, the men went to, I said, you will die like this, this weekend. You are the one who will say it. Don't say, God, God, kill them. Now, that's no prayer. Everyone after my life, I decree. Wednesday is your last day. You will say it the way you want it. Are you hearing me? If you like, do that kind of Christianity. Father, are they talking now? Huh? Papa said, we're talking. Are they? Go to another church. If you're in this church, you must be angry. You must what? I don't like the way they carry you. We come pray. No! Before they carry you, they. they say, now those people leave them. Leave them. If you try them, you don't go. You go, go. Oh, but you go, go. You go, go. Are you angry? With the holy anger. With the, everyone's focus must be fulfilled. Two prayer points. Everyone's focus must be fulfilled. Two, the thing you want, you, you want to see. Open your mouth and pray there in the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Take the oil in your hands. After David was anointed, the Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. I decree that oil seems to be an ordinary oil from today. Amen. The same Holy Ghost first upon that oil in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every scripture, every word we have declared, the Holy Ghost quickened them and made them manifest to this oil. Amen. In the name of Jesus. He said, touch not my anointed. I decree a seal of touch not to be over everyone anointed today. Amen. He said, I'll beat down his foes. I'll plague them that hate him. That shall become our testimony in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He said, shall hear the desire of my enemies. We will hear it. You will hear that those who pursued us, they are no longer alive. Yeah. And as you are anointed, it will pave the way for your own breakthroughs. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. He said, be thief, be cough, it shall restore. <laughs> But hear this. Hear me well. In case anybody, now hear me, I'm going to pray now with a very dangerous prayer. If anybody open our door forcefully to rob or to steal or tow even what belongs to like back, tow it. If, except I'm not sent, before 6 p.m. today, they'll tear their clothes and run out. If anybody tow, open your door forcefully. A young man stole something and I said, I decree before evening, you are mad. He began to be like a madman. I want to pray. He said, this is the one you declared. Now listen, anyone who tore our back forcefully to pick anything from us, before evening, they tear their clothes. That madness, they will confess what they have done in the name of Jesus. I decree an irrevocable madness. Amen. If he's at the airport as I'm talking now, the person will tear his clothes. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody who has pointed gun at you to rob you, I decree this their last weekend. Amen. Anyone planning to kidnap anyone in the sound of my voice, this is their last weekend. Amen. In the name Jesus Christ. For you, evil shall be far from you. But everything you have opened your mouth to say, they will be fulfilled. Take a little in your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost, put a seal of touch not on me, and all the words declared, walk in my favor, but against my enemies, and against Satan. And not yourself, I'm blessed to prophecy in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to God. I have the seal of the Holy Ghost upon my life. must be judged by this anointing. Restoration. Thank you, Father. In Joel chapter 2, if you read from 21 for time sake, 25, then 26, I will restore. Now, by leading of the Holy Ghost, whatever any of us have lost will be restored now. Anything that belongs to us in redemption. That has not come to us by this anointing of this moment. Your dignity, honor, blessings, name them. Today they will all be restored. Amen. Even marriages will be restored. Amen. Children that went on a prodigal journey will be restored. Amen. I decree your health will be restored. Amen. Your blessings will be restored. 
in the name of Jesus there shall be restoration so shall it be somebody who, who went off with sickness your health will be restored in Jesus mighty name now like hear this and hear me well don't pray for vengeance stay in the camp of the enemy the most dangerous thing is to the sons of Scepha said we cast you anyway the, the devil said you Jesus, I know Paul, I know where you. You come and say, sit down. And sit down and say, hey, you have your property with me. Make sure you are born again. And if you are born again, somehow you went some funny places to dedicate your life so that you can be very free. Maybe you enter a prayer house, you enter one place that is somehow do small, small kukuje to dedicate your life. You know, small or melana, come back and return back to God. Until the prodigal son returned, he was not restored. So they turn back like a prodigal child and they will be restored to dignity. Wherever you are, you have not accepted Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Savior. Offer these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose to save me. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. If you offer that prayer, keep standing. Others take your seats. If Please attend to everyone.